Valencia have gone from winning La Liga titles for fun to <gasps> fighting for survival. Last year, they finished 16th and now they're in the bottom three again. Their downfall over the past 10 years has been crazy to witness with bad ownership being a big reason for it. And considering just how good Prime Valencia was, it's sad to see how they are now. So today, it's my job to bring the glory days back to Valencia, as I've just been announced as their brand new manager with the goal of making the once European giants the world's best club. So here we go, season one with Valencia and this is the team that we've loaded into and honestly what on earth has happened to this team over the past decade? The owners really have done a number on this team, I just look at how many average players they've got right now. And the worst thing is, Mamad is fairly by a country mile their best player isn't even their player, as soon as the season's over he's going back to Liverpool. But I will say this, one thing Valencia do have going for them is the average age of their best players right Right now is decent so maybe this team's still in that developmental stage because they've got Diego Lopez only 22 76 overall not that good right now but could potentially become a monster and it's the same story with Javi Guerra as well and we do have more good news guys 60 million euros is our budget for season one and we can do quite a bit with that money it's not going to be easy guys but I feel like it's definitely possible to make this Valencia side once again one of the world's best teams but first we gotta mess with the tactics because the Brexit 4-4-2 isn't it for Valencia so we're going custom with the 4-3-3 attacking variation with short passing build up and a balanced defensive approach. As for the player instructions our striker is going to be approached with both wingers being inside forwards the cam is going to be the playmaker with our midfielders being box to box. If this doesn't work in season 1 we can always come back and mess around with it a bit but I firmly believe this is the best way to set up Valencia and I believe now this is our strongest starting 11 going going into season one there's still a lot of work to do with this team don't get me wrong but this is a decent start i mean we've got our goalie sorted for at least one season and my modest village there's no way i'm sending him back to liverpool sooner than we have to our midfield trio looks good so does our front three it's just our two center backs i'm a little bit worried about not so much Mosquera, more diacobi i mean Mosquera is an exciting prospect at 20 years old he's going absolutely nowhere diacobi on the other hand he's 27 76 over all, maybe we put a lot of that money into a better centre back. And guys, I've also been thinking about a short term right winger because Fran Perez, I mean, granted he's showing great potential, but he's 73 rated. I feel like for one season we loan him out and then bring him back once he's a better player. And once we sort those two positions out, we may just be able to turn Valencia's season around just like that. But first, we have to get our transfers right, guys. And I think Sani Matthias Ginter is absolutely the right thing to do. I mean, granted he's 30 and not that fast, but he's 82 rated. And look at how good he's defending his man. That's what we need at the back and just like that after spending 29 and a half million Matthias Ginter becomes my first signing in charge of Valencia and looking at that back four now ladies and gents I'm feeling much more confident going into season one already but we still have 28 million to spend and we need a short term right winger and luckily I know just who to bring in Hakem Ziyech from Galatasaray in his 30s now 80 overall I know he had a bit of a stinker at Chelsea but I feel like in La Liga he could do a thing or to. And considering we only had to spend 17 million to sign him, I think we've just got a bargain. But that leaves us 8 million in total to spend. That's just enough to cover our coaching system and sort the contracts out. That's our transfer window done. Well, we are for signing players anyway because all seven of these players are going out on loan for at least one or two years. And you'll notice there's a little bit of a pattern with all these players. They're all under the age of 23. I'm especially hoping Fran Perez as a good loan out man because once he comes back, I'm definitely planning on slotting him straight into the starting team but for now at least guys this is how we are lined up going into season number one i'm not sure if i've sorted all of valencia's problems out yet but what i do know is i've definitely improved our weaknesses i've improved our defense by signing ginter and i've brought a bit of experience and quality where it's desperately needed up top and in my opinion, I'm doing the smart thing by keeping my Mardis Philly for as long as humanly possible. He will be going to Liverpool next year. There's nothing we can do about that. But for now, he plays for us. And I feel like that might be the difference maker this year. If you've got a solid defensive lineup and a very good keeper in between the sticks, you've got a decent chance of having a good year. And you know what, guys? I feel like we've had a great year. I mean, Duro's got 19 and 5, 14 and 8 for Pepelu, 12 and 10 for Javi Guerra, and 10 goals for Diego Lopez. Not to mention the improvement 
improvement man look at the overalls of our highest rated players now half of these were in their 70s at the start of this year and when you see it on paper it's even freaking better hang on a minute where the hell's our central attacking midfielder i actually despise the release clauses in spain man he's gone to freaking atalanta for 25 million god i hate release clauses man this was not a part of the plan but to be fair neither was this we are top four in la liga after our first year in charge guys this is actually insane right now as we speak in real life they're in a relegation battle but we've got them champions league football for season two that is amazing we also reached the quarters of the copa de España. oh my lord valencia this year we're on smoke i don't want to get ahead of myself and say my custom tactics are working a treat but i feel like every single custom tactic i make lately just works a treat but whilst i am buzzing that this team has got champions league football for season two that does cause one or two problems for example mama Mardis Philly is going back to Liverpool at the start of next year, so next season we'll defo need to replace him somehow. And because Andre Almeida no longer plays for us because his release clause was activated, Martin Tejon, who's currently out on loan right now, is our best attacking midfielder, so this is something else we've got to sort out. Not to mention replacing Hakim Ziyech. I mean, truth be told, I did not think we were going to get UCL football with Ziyech in the team. I thought we were going to get mid-table at best, but now that we have got UCL football, we may need to take action on this. Like I said guys, one or two problems to deal with, but hopefully the budget might be on our side because of how well we've done this year, and if that is the case, we might be okay in the UCL. But before we find out, if you're enjoying this Valencia rebuild, drop this video a big old thumbs up and smash that subscribe button if you're new. Now guys, here we are in Season 2, and we've been let down by the board. 60 mil is all they've got. They originally gave us 151 million, but then just suddenly changed their mind. And we've still got so much to do with this team to make Make sure that it's ready for not only the La Liga, but the Champions League. I mean, we need a better attacking midfielder than Martin Tejon. We certainly need a better keeper than Stolen Dimitri Vitsky. And probably a stronger right winger than Hakim Ziyech. Not to mention as well, guys, all the release clauses on basically every single one of our highest rated players. What on earth are we going to do this year, man? The board have shafted me. It's clear 60 million isn't enough, ladies and gents. We're going to have to create our own funds, aren't we? So that's exactly what I'm doing, guys. All these players on this transfer list are going out for sale. A couple of more going out on loan but we'll just move across from that but ZH and Luis Rojar are the two money makers from this transfer list if we're able to sell them we might just have enough money to do well in season two of Valencia and there we go guys all four of the players have indeed been sold and let me just tell you we've got more than 60 mil now we've got 103 million to spend ladies and gents with that kind of money I'm expecting silverware from this season but guys I think we should start with signing a new keeper because just this second I was able to loan out stole to Mitrovitsky to Arsenal for a couple of years. And I can't think of anybody better than Philip Jorgensen from Chelsea. Only 23, 80 overall already. We've got to be patient with this guy, but I reckon in a couple of years' time, he'll be one of the world's best keepers. And there we go. 30 million euros later, we've got our goalie. And that leaves us 71 million to spend, guys. And remember, we finished inside the top four last year. Valencia are back on the rise, so I reckon with this kind of money, we can go for a proper quality ride winger so i'm going for jack Grealish, who's playing for psg right now he's not the quickest he's not got the best shooting but he can pass he can dribble in my opinion he can do a great job on the right hand side of the pitch for us but he wasn't cheap guys he's our most expensive signing yet as we've just spent 54.2 million to sign him on a four-year deal but now we only have 10 million to spend on a new attacking midfielder. And this would be an issue, guys, if I hadn't already thought of something. Because who remembers Fran Perez, who I sent on loan last year? He didn't have an amazing loan move. Only 75 overall at 22 years old. But I do have faith in this guy. I mean, looking at his stats, I think he suits the cam roll better than the winger roll anyway. So we are converting him to one. And he's going to stay at 75 overall. Come on, Perez. Give me a break. Even though his overall didn't go up, I do feel like this is the right move. We'll give him a season in the starting 11 and see what happens but going into season two this is how we are lined up guys and honestly i'm liking this valencia team it is cooking at the minute but will they cook in the champions league because for the first time in god knows how many years we are back in this competition as for la liga it's not been the best start in the world four games played with two wins one draw and one loss but guys it's still very early in this season four games played is nothing i'm more concerned about where we'll be at the end of this season and where we are guys is 
top four once again. Fourth in La Liga. I mean, only by one point this time. Athletic Bilbao were right hot in our tails. Normally, I'd be disappointed that we didn't finish higher than last year. But look at the three teams above us, man. Madrid, Atletico, and Barca. It's going to take some doing to get the better of those three. As for the Copa de España, we once again made the quarters. This time, getting knocked out by Barca. But we dropped an almighty stinker in the UCL. 30th in the freaking league phase. We didn't even make it to the playoffs. That is actually horrendous, man. Even Shamrock Rovers finished higher than us. That's unacceptable. I mean, look at these stats. Grealish had a great campaign. So did Doro. So did Diego Lopez. Pep Luguera. Even Jose Gaye. But hang on. Why has Martin Tejon got 27 games this year? Oh, for God's sake, don't tell me our previous attacking midfield had a freaking release clause. I cannot believe this. Fran Perez, 80 overall, now plays for Atletico Madrid. No wonder they're finishing above us. They're just stealing all of our players. Next year, guys, I'm making a point of doing something very important. I am taking the release clause off every single one of our highest rated players. I am sick and tired of simming to the end of the season and seeing that one of our players has just gone bye-bye. So it looks like one way or the other next year, we need a new camp because Martin Tejon cannot be our central attacking midfielder. We may have to look into a new centre-back as well because Ginter is 32 years old. Now next year he'll be 33 and that's when players outfield start to drop in overall. And Valencia fans watching, I'm sorry, but we may have to keep an eye on Jose Gaia. I mean, he's almost 33 years old himself. And as I've just said, when you get to that age, you start going down in overall. Aside from that though, guys, the rest of the team actually looks spot on going into season three. There's just a couple of tweaks that we need to make and we'll be able to take Valencia to that next level. In this season, the board have actually backed us 80 million euros to be exact. It's still not as much as I'd like, but it's definitely better than 60. To be fair though, when you think about it, all we really need is a better centre-back than Ginter and an attacking midfielder in place of Tejon, and our team set for season two. I mean, obviously our quality on the bench isn't exactly amazing, but it could definitely look way worse than this. For now, we need to focus this 80 mil on the starting 11 quality, because once we do that, guys, the players that we're replacing can drop to the bench and add quality there anyway. But guys, I'm looking at this team again, and I've just had a thought, maybe we don't need an attacking midfielder, maybe we need a new right winger. Because when you look at Grealish's stats, I mean, he's not got much pace or shooting, but his passing and dribbling's insane. I feel like he'd be a better cam than winger. And it'll only take him two weeks to become one, so for now, I reckon we leave him in that central attacking midfield role, and we bring in a right winger and a centre-back. So that's exactly what I did starting with the centre-back as I've just spent 40 million on Wilfred Singer who's 25, 82 overall and standing at 6 foot 3. This guy's absolutely rapid too. I mean both of our centre-backs have over 80 pace each man. Both of these guys are going to be a nightmare to get past. But now we have only 38 million to spend which might not be enough for the right winger I've got in mind to sign. As I want Barry's Alper Yilmaz from Galatasaray mid 20 and 84 overall and as you can see his stats definitely suit a winger role far more than Grealish but it's going to be expensive as you can see so in order to make this happen we're going to have to throw a player into this so I'm offering 27 mil alongside Mathis Ginter even if they don't want Ginter this is worth 50.5 million overall it really does depend if they accept it oh you absolute idiot Galatasaray man why would you not accept that that's a good freaking offer this is literally our last chance 34 mil alongside Hugo Guillemon. I mean, if they don't accept this, we'll have to go for somebody else or actually sell Ginter directly, then go back in for him. I don't see them accepting this, though. Why on earth would you accept that over Ginter? That makes no sense. But whether it makes sense or not, it just happened, which means that's our transfer window done. But we're not quite done just yet, as Grealish is training to become a cam is complete. He's going to turn into an 85 rated cam. What did I tell you? He's a better cam than Winger. And I've also converted Yilmaz to a right winger. What's he going to go up to? 84. Well, that's not disappointing, is it? But what isn't disappointing is how good this team is right now, man. I mean, it's definitely far better than what we first had in season one, isn't it? And hopefully we managed to do a little bit better in the UCL this year as we are once again in this competition. I mean, it's a much better start to the La Liga campaign. Four games played, undefeated, second in the league. 
And on top of that, I've been through all of our highest rated plays and I've made sure that if they have got a release clause, it is an insanely high release clause so that even if we do lose them, it'll be worth it anyway. We are more than prepared for season three, guys. The question is though, is this the year we finally win Valencia some silverware? Well, judging by our end of season stats, it's looking promising. 28 and three for Doro, 27 and eight for Yilmaz, 15 and 15 for Javi Guerra, 14 and 11 for Jack Greeley, 13 and 10 for Diego Lopez. That is absolutely mental. And by the looks of it, not only is our team really improved this year, but every single player has actually stayed here. The release clause idea freaking worked. The question is though now, how have we actually done this season? Well, I'd say we've done very well. We are La Liga champions by two points. We have made Valencia the best team in Spain. Only a year ago, I was literally saying it'll take some doing to top the big three in Spain, but a year later, we've done exactly that. And we've won the Super Copa smashing Real Madrid to do it. And we've won the Copa de España. Oh my god, we've actually won the treble with Valencia. This is nuts. And there's a solid chance it could be the quadruple as we finish third in the league phase of the UCL, which means we're through to the round of 16. But that's where Liverpool makes short work of us, man. 5-2 on aggregate. I mean, I suppose we can't win everything, can we? But man, imagine if we'd have won the UCL this year. That would have been history-making for Valencia. But looking at this team, guys, I don't think we're far away from making them the world's best team. Just a couple of tweaks here and there, and we'll be right on its doorstep. I mean, next year, we will have to consider replacing Joe Jose Gaia, I'll look at his development plan and make me decision based on that, but right now, I am leaning towards replacing you. But I'm definitely replacing Thierry Correa. I mean, I know he's been here since season one, but he's 83 overall, he's 28, he's not going to get any better, and he's by a mile the weakest link in the team. I'm also keeping an eye on Jack Grealish. I don't think he'll go down an overall just yet, but you never know, do you? But I do feel like if we sort this defence out, and then with any spare money we've got, increase the quality on our bench, we will be looking at the world's best team in season four and would you look at this in season four the board have absolutely backed us 150 million to spend i mean after winning the treble last year i feel like this season they had no choice but to back us and like i said last year all we need to do with this team is focus on the left back and right back situation but fortunately there's only one position out of the two we've got to focus on because despite being 32 years old jose guy as you can see is growing at a very quick rate still so for at least one more you we're keeping him in the team which means Thierry Correa is the one and only player getting replaced this year and I feel like that is the key to us winning the Champions League and if we have money left over, we will be focusing that money on our bench. But for now, I want a better right back and I know exactly who to get. Trent Alexander-Arnold from Liverpool. I know you Liverpool fans won't be liking this, but at the end of this season in real life, he's talking about leaving anyway. So I feel like he'd be inclined to join the Spanish champions. And that's exactly what he's just done is we've just forked out a whopping 90 million euros to sign him on a four-year deal. And I'm not being funny, guys, but looking at this team right now, it is hard to argue you against the fact that I feel like we've got the best team in the world at this point. But now it's time to focus on the bench and right now guys, I feel like we're actually pretty sound defensively and for our keeper, we just need midfielders and attackers. So starting with the midfield, I just spent 37.1 million euros on Conor Gallagher. He's already a very good player and because he's played for Atletico, he's already got that La Liga experience. But now we only have 9 million to spend guys. I feel like if we do want a bit more depth, we're going to have to scout that free agents list and thankfully it's come in clutch for us Tahith Chong, Tamir Saeed and also Miguel Machado all very solid players and all very affordable because they're free agents and just look at the bench now ladies and gents quality for every single position we are set for season four but are we set for the Champions League as we are once again in it for the third season running? The first season we crashed out in the league phase. Last year we made it to the round of 16. How are we going to do this time? As we're once again off to a great start in La Liga. Four games played. We have lost one, but we're still right up there. I think Valencia are in for a very successful campaign, man. I firmly believe at the end of this season we'll be calling Valencia the world's best team. But one thing's for certain, guys. We're the best team in Spain once again. Two titles in a row. That's the first time Valencia have done that as well, if I'm not mistaken, since the 2000s. No Super Copa this time though, as Madrid knock us out in the semis. And we lost the Copa de España final, oh my 
days. The double was right there. But it still could be, guys, is whilst we do miss out on automatic knockout football, we are in the playoffs. Where we just about get past Liverpool this time. Oh my god, that is sweet, sweet revenge from last year. And we've gone on to beat Dortmund in the round of 16. And we've beaten City in the quarters. We could be playing Real Madrid, Bayern or PSG. Honestly, put us against any one of them teams and I'm putting money on us beating them. And look at that, we smashed PSG 4-1 on our get we're playing Real Madrid in the final and looking at their team I mean the front three and midfields world class but that back four is shocking man no wonder we won the La Liga title twice they're terrible and man when you look at our stats we have outdone ourselves this year especially Diego Lopez 49 goal contributions in 61 games is insane and this is indeed the starting team that we are going into the final against with Real Madrid and I'm putting money on us to wipe the floor of them man we've got an insane squad on our hands and what I love about this Valencia side, more than half of them are OGs from season one, man. The likes of Mosquera, Guerra, Pepelu, Gaia, Lopez, and of course, Doro up top. And with this team, ladies and gents, we've won basically everything you can win. We've won two La Liga titles, one Copa de España, and one Super Copa. And now we've got the chance to win the one trophy we haven't won just yet with Valencia, and that is, of course, the Champions League. Here comes Mbappe early in the game. Look at that. Oh, no, we can't get across to him. And they've got 1-0 up inside five minutes. That is atrocious. Cavara to skill you with the goal. I thought we had the here, man. I thought this slide tackle did the job, but he went near post not at all the start we're after ladies and gents that couldn't have gone any worse but we do have Grealish on the ball he's got a bit of room to run in two good save Courtois but Yilmaz is on the ball now okay this could work this could work get a bit of room you good save here we go though Diego Lopez is on the receiving end of a very good ball oh no where's the rebound Yilmaz is still on the ball okay we're gonna find Doro near post that and we get the goal I can't believe Yilmaz missed that original rebound but thankfully we actually get the goal anyway. Fair play to Yilmaz though, we recorded really well. Doro though, right place, right time and he's smashing that in the back of the net. One apiece, 25 minutes in, game on ladies and gents. Here we have Trent Alexander-Arnold coming forward, he's looking for that run, he's found Hugo Doro in behind Virgil van Dijk is in chase, can he outpace him? Good save Courtois. Real Madrid coming forward now on the right side of the pitch, Ballingham he's found Mbappe, he's found a bit of room and he's put it in the roof of the net. Oh I can't believe that man, Killian and freaking Mbappe, nine goals in 15 games, man. That's insane. And just like that, we are chasing the game once again. Real Madrid are just too good. But here we come with Diego Lopez. He's running through the entire defense. Can we get an equalizer? Just like down the stroke of off time. We get a second. Diego Lopez with a phenomenal run in between the defense. He gets a better room on his left foot. And just like that, we're going into the second half equal. That is actually insane, man. What a freaking end to the first half. Second half, it's all to play for now. As we got Vinny Jr. on the left hand side of the pitch, he's gone back post. That's a good error. Good save, Jorgensen. Grealish is on the ball now though. He's up against Tushimeni. He's trying to find Doro and he's found him. He's onside. He's in behind. Can he make it three? Oh, no way. Lopez is on the ball now though. He's in behind. He's causing havoc for Real Madrid's defence. He's going to spot that ball. Oh, that is beautiful. Finally, a 3-2 lead against Madrid. Diego Lopez is insane, man. He's tearing Madrid apart and Hugo Doro, right place, right time. One once again, unmarked, easiest goal of his career. Here comes Trent Alexander-Arnold on the ball. He's pushing forward on the right side. He's found Yilmaz. Yilmaz, by the way, is so freaking big and strong. Look at that. That's Diego Lopez. He's rebound. How the hell is that not gone in Courtois? That's not human. Here comes Mbappe. There he's on. Oh, that is a great save, Jorgensen. Here we go, though. 15 minutes to go. Yilmaz is on the ball. We're going to find Doro on the inside. Can he make it four? Oh, my God. What do we have to do to score again? With only 10 minutes to go as well, we're not exactly safe from losing this game. Madrid can easily get back into it. Real Madrid pushing forward. Extra time is looming. That's it though. Surely that tackle seals the deal. We have beaten Madrid 3-2 in the UCL final to make Valencia the world's best team. What a game, man. We went 1-0 down. We got an equaliser. We went 2-1 down. Got another equaliser. And then we sealed the deal with a third. And that only took four years as well guys Valencia despite what's happening in real life are actually cracked on career mode 
And as Josie Gaia holds the Champions League in his hands, we have once again made Valencia the European Giants, the Champions League winners. Which means my job with them is done. If you have enjoyed this video, want to see more content like this, be sure to leave this video a big old thumbs up and smash that subscribe button if you're new. And if you want to watch more content from me, YouTube recommends you to watch this video.